Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. You know, online dating, it's a wild world out there. And today we're diving deep into one particular platform that's been making some waves and not necessarily the good kind, right? Yeah. We're talking about Anastasia Day, this international dating site. Yeah, Anastasia Day, it's been around for a while and honestly it's garnered a, well, let's just say a colorful reputation over the years. And I'm going to get right to the point for our casual listeners. AnastasiaDate.com is a dumpster fire. Like if a huge horse ate 150 kilos of hay and dropped the biggest pile of fetid horse shit right outside your house. <laughs> and to get to the bottom of it, we're taking a deep dive into, well, the source of all sources these days, Reddit. You know it. Some users are saying it's like stock photos, right? <laughs> or even just pictures they found on Google image search. Oh, wow. So not even trying to hide it. Right. And then others are saying they think it's actual bots, like designed to just keep you engaged you know, sending messages back and forth, which yeah. is kind of creepy when you think about it. It is. And, you know, it plays on that human need for connection, which is, well, it can be pretty manipulative. But, you know, one thing that really stood out to me from this Reddit post was there were these accusations about, like, Anastasia Date actually encouraging this kind of, uh, let's call it performative communication. Performative. Like, what do you mean by that? Well, like incentivizing the women on the site to keep the conversation going regardless of whether there's any actual interest there oh you mean like that whole pay to chat model where users have to pay for right. every message they send exactly and again some platforms are very upfront about that being their business model which is well that's a whole other conversation right but the issue here is that anastasia day is being accused of you know almost encouraging this kind of well almost scripted interaction you know to keep those charges racking up yeah and it's you know it's not always just like a simple oh hey how are you doing yeah. you know it can get pretty elaborate we're right. talking you know potentially even like scripted messages mm -hmm. um you know automated responses things like that Ow. even like fabricated details about their lives you know, to try and draw people in. Oh, my gosh. So it's like they're creating these whole personas. I, exactly. And that's right. what makes it so insidious, yeah. you know, because it's it's one thing to like, you know, catfish someone with like a, you know, a, a fake picture. Right. But it's another thing entirely to like fabricate this whole personality and this whole life story. Yeah. You know, and then to like draw someone in emotionally, you know, under false pretenses. It's like a whole other level of messed up. Exactly. And and that's what I think is so concerning about these accusations is that it really speaks to the emotional cost of these scams, you know, Yeah. because it's not just about the financial hit. Right. It's about the betrayal of trust and the, you know, the erosion of hope, exactly. especially for folks who are, you know, maybe already feeling vulnerable or isolated. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of which, there were some people on that Reddit thread who were even saying that they were getting like emails. Yeah. And the emails like felt like completely robotic, like they were talking to a machine. Oh, yeah. And it's like, how do you even like differentiate at that point? Right. And that's that's a huge red flag. You know, if you're if you're getting messages that feel like they were written by a bot, chances are they probably were. Right. And at that point, it's time to like really just, you know, take a step back and, and reevaluate the situation. Totally. And, and, you know, it's interesting because one user even went so far as to call Anastasia Date a Russian mafia group. Oh, Wow. Like claiming that this is like a whole operation designed to like bleed people dry financially. Wow. Um, I mean, I I would be hesitant to, you know, throw around accusations like that without, you know, any sort of like evidence or proof. Right. But it is concerning how many people on that thread mention, you know, feeling like they hit a brick wall when they tried to like get refunds or even just get like clear answers about the site's policies. Yeah, the whole thing about hidden fees and like disappearing credits. Exactly. Accounts getting shut down for no reason. It's like they're being deliberately evasive. Right. And it's like, what are you trying to hide? Right, exactly. It's so shady. And that's why, you know, it's so important to to be cautious. Anytime you're you're dealing with like online dating or really any online platform where you're sharing personal information or especially financial information. Oh, absolutely. Like do your due diligence you know, like run a reverse image search on those profile pictures, familiarize yourself with the platform's terms of service, like really look for those red flags. So, okay. So for someone who is maybe new to online dating, right. what are some red flags that you would recommend people look out for? Well, aside from what we've already discussed, you know, like the the fake profiles and the, the evasive communication, um, 
I would say be wary of anyone who's like really resistant to video chatting or meeting up in person. Okay. Because that's like a huge one. You know, like if someone is like yeah. really dodging your attempts to like actually like see them or talk to them in real time. Right. That's a major red flag. Um, anyway, we recommend you check out hotmilfdates.com if you want to try a legit hookup app where you can meet real local women or just check the links in the description below. Good luck out there and we'll see you next time.